Hello friends. This patch has brought two reworks for the Orc faction, Boss Gulgorts and Snapareka. I use the word rework loosely because the two feel like almost entirely new characters compared to their old versions. In this video, I'll run through both characters, explore how significant the stat changes have been, and discuss some nuances and math. If you don't want to watch the full video and just want a summary, well, the characters are much better. They're not likely to be guild raid meta, but I think will be staples for guild war. Let's take a look. The new boss has five traits. The new orc faction trait, get stuck in, big target, crushing strike, final vengeance, and mechanical. His stats shown on screen are all at diamond three, and we'll make some comparisons later on. He now has a two hit melee eviscerating attack and a single hit projectile attack at range 3. This is down from 5 hits chain and 3 hits projectile previously. This change to the number of hits is also important because it means that Gulgorts can now be used in the one hit legendary release event track. His active has been completely reworked. Gulgorts now summons two orc boys. He also gives bonus movement, melee damage and melee hits to adjacent allies and all friendly orcs on the battlefield until the end of turn. After doing all this, Gulgorts charges a target and attacks it. As you'll infer from the wording, there has to be a target that Gulgorts is able to charge in order to use this ability. So if there are no units to charge, then the ability cannot be used. His passive, Light Him Up, can now be triggered either at melee or range, versus just melee previously. Now, it effectively functions as a bonus 3 hits to the target Gulgorts attacked. If the initial attack killed the target, then these passive hits are allocated to another random enemy in range. Before we go on to the gameplay, we can take a look at some stat comparisons between the old Gulgorts and the new one. Health and armor stats are shown here independent of equipment, and you can see how the character measures against the field both before and after the rework. The damage calculations here are again independent of passive abilities or any other add-ons, just a raw measure of damage stat, hits and pierce ratio against a target with both infinite armor and zero armor. It looks like Gulgorts will be a little bit more tanky, but on the surface has lost a tremendous amount of damage from his reduced hits. However, the gameplay with Gulgorts contradicts this, and the character feels a lot more powerful. So I got Tawan, Tacticus Ambassador and Friend, to help me analyse things further. When we add in the passive ability, which now triggers all the time, even on ranged hits, the character's stat centiles improve significantly. This does not even account for potential bonus hits from the Get Stuck In trait, nor the Crushing Strike trait. In this gameplay clip, all units are at Silver 1 rarity and ability level 26. The gameplay stuff here is pretty straightforward. At the battle's start, Boss Gulgorts cannot use his active because a target must be within charge range. After we move some units around on both sides, Gulgorts is able to use his active on turn 2. He lets out a mighty roar and summons two orc boys. He then charges and attacks Jaeger. The two orc boys take their turn next. One throws a grenade, while the other solo kills Helbrecht from the high ground. I kind of gloss over the orc boys a little bit in this video, but this is really impressive. Yes, the orc has high ground, but a summon one-shots a legendary character of the same rarity, and is still left with half health after the backswing from Final Vengeance. As my French friend Ernst would say, pas mal. The remainder of our forces have a buff icon that shows that they have the WAG buff. They gain bonus movement and melee hits if they are an orc anywhere on the map, and the benefit is also conferred to adjacent non-orc allies. In this case, Shozil becomes a mighty 3 movement firesight marksman. Units that are summoned after the WAG do not gain the same benefit. Going back to that bit when Gulgorts attacked Jaeger, we can see the two separate attacks. The melee eviscerate does higher damage than the subsequent projectile passive hits. In this following clip, you can see that the passive from Gulgorts is treated as a separate attack to his normal attack 
and therefore theoretically can also trigger two separate crit chains. You can see that after attacking, we get two triggers of Exeter Rose passive. On this slide, I've done my usual infographic for the character. Feel free to pause or screenshot if you'd like. Next, I've also covered the abilities at various intervals so that you can see what the scaling looks like. Snapareka is up next and has the same traits as before, except this time he has Get Stuck In instead of Daka. The stats on screen are at Diamond 3 and again we'll do some comparative work later on. Snapper's active is completely new. Daka 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 deals projectile damage to an enemy within 3 range. It starts off with 6 hits and adds on 2 hits for each time that Snapper was repaired in battle, to a maximum of 16 hits. If the target is defeated, then the remaining hits spill over to another unit within range. Using this ability costs Snapper 15% of its maximum health, and theoretically, if you use it when Snapper is really low, can kill it. Snapper Rekka's Power Trip passive ability lets him ignore a portion of the target's armor. If Snapper is at full health, it also gives him plus one hit and causes him to reduce the target's armor for the remainder of the battle at the cost of 5% of his maximum health. This passive can trigger multiple times per battle as long as you can keep bringing Snapareka's health back up to 100%. On screen here, we can again do some initial stat comparisons between the old Snapper and the new one. These damage numbers, while impressive, don't account for the fact that Snapper's passive ignores a portion of the enemy armor, and Get Stuck In can further increase the number of hits. This is just a roundabout way of saying that the damage that Snappa does is even more impressive than first appears on paper. Snappa's gameplay has some interesting interactions. You can see that when you click on the ability, there is a counter that tells you how many hits the ability does at the moment. I'll hold off on using the active straight away and show you his passive. This reduces the target's armor and appears to do so permanently. Remember, however, that this only triggers when Snappareka is at full health. After attacking, Snapper loses 5% of his maximum health, so unless you're repairing Snapper, this only triggers once per battle. Interestingly, repairing the unit with Actus when Snapper is at full health allows Snapper to attack again, but doesn't increase the count of the active ability. However, health regained through things like Makotep's passive, which provides a repair effect, does seem to increase the stacks on the active ability. I find it starts to get more interesting when we start combining things with Snappa. His active ability goes up to 16 hits after being repaired 5 times. That 16 hits can trigger another 8 hits from the Orc faction trait, get stuck in, taking that active up to 24 hits at full power. Combine that with Eldrion's passive and high ground. We can attack a legendary 4 Sarek for over 100,000 damage. Sure, these are difficult hoops to jump through, but if you were an orc fanatic who has already invested heavily into the character, you now have a unit that can potentially deal a lot of damage in an orc raid team. Sadly, despite all of these hits, Snappa still only counts as having one attack, and will therefore struggle to make it into the top mech team, which asks for multiple attacks in order to trigger Exeter Row several times in a turn. On this slide, I've done my usual infographic for the character. Feel free to pause or screenshot if you'd like. Next, I've also covered the abilities at various ability intervals, so that you can see what the scaling looks like. The orcs are better, there's no doubt about that. I don't think they'll see usability in guild raids because the bar is so high to get into one of the existing meta teams. They seem fun to use and feel like orcs, either summoning units through the WAG, or in the case of Snapareka, pushing machinery to its limit while damaging it at the same time. The orc boys summoned through Gulgorts are pretty meaty and powerful, and summons automatically start a rung above other characters due to the AI manipulation. I think it's a pretty powerful rework, and better than others that we've seen in the past, like Shadow Sun and Tank Smasher. Even if the orcs aren't taking over any meta, they are now a powerful faction-based team that looked like a lot of fun to play. Your reward for building a starter faction to complete the elite campaign is a solid, pre-built Guild War team. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
I've just started a Patreon for my channel. If you are fortunate enough to be in a position to support me and my content, I'd love it if you could check it out. I'm super grateful for the small group that have done so and given me a platform to continue doing this. If not, I've left my refer a friend code here on screen. If you are a newer player, you can enter it and earn yourself 100 Blackstone. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now.